Okay, so we have seen a couple of trackers. Now the question is, can we track more natural shapes, uh, detecting them from the events? Let's take a look at uh, one example. So this is a paper from ICRA Robotics Conference 2017 uh, by the group of the UPenn, University of Pennsylvania. And what they're doing is they are um, detecting features on the event using the concept of uh, motion compensation. Um, what this plot represents is, um, well, there is a frame just there for visualization, but basically on red are these feature tracks and these uh, kind of frames or frames of points are, um, uh, yeah, 2D point sets that are generated by motion compensation. Okay, so the natural edge patterns that will come directly from the events and motion compensation is a technique that we have commented already in the event representations. Um, here it's uh, used for, um, for point sets rather than for images. And the goal is to line up um, events that are you know, displaced. We will see in a video for a moment so that you get a, a sharp feature template that is easier to track or more reliable to track. And registration of uh, these uh, kind of features, uh, edge-like features, is done using the expectation maximization version of um, ICP, iterative closest point algorithm. So iterative closest point is registering uh, point sets, in this case 2D point sets, and EM, so expectation maximization, it's an algorithm that applies to many different uh, uh, problems. And what it's doing, it's, um, it's iteratively uh, optimizing the quantity using some, something called soft data associations. Uh, previous methods, and the one that we have seen before by Tetaldi and Kung in the previous uh, video, when they were looking at uh, whether uh, an event uh, was uh, belonged to a cluster or so, it was doing more like hard data association. What does hard data association mean? It means that each event is assigned to only one cluster, only one point on the model shape. Soft data association, what it means is that a single event uh, can be assigned to different points on the model shape and it's assigned to each of them with, uh, with a weight. And this weight is typically interpreted as a probability. So the same event may come from two different edges, but we are not sure from which edge it comes from. So we assigned different value to, to each of them. Okay, so let's take a look at the, the two main steps. So the main idea is that uh, we are building these features uh, or templates uh, from the events directly by motion compensation. And then the events are interpreted as point sets. So let's see. On the left, we have a space-time representation of events, um, x, y, and time. Time is the vertical axis in this case, uh, pointing upwards. And here the events, they have just one color, so priority is not used. And on the right, you see what would be like a top view of, of this uh, point set or point cloud. And this is just a, a projection. So it's, this top view is like a projection on the, on the horizontal plane at time equals zero. So what motion compensation is doing is that basically you are trying to find uh, a flow vector, so a direction in space-time that uh, best uh, aligns the, the events. Right? So we see it again, this kind of modifying the point cloud until the events kind of have a uh, lineup when they are seen from above. So, so what, you, what you saw before is that the edge pattern here is not very intelligible, but as soon as you start maybe trying to play around with what is the best uh, direction in which the event, you could look at the events, then you can see some edge patterns arising, right? The events kind of line up, which is not, uh, they are not lining up 
at the beginning of the video right this is just a pixel grid you can see the individual pixels where they are and now as soon as you start uh, trying to find a, a good direction in space time to look at these events well then it's no longer uh, a uniform grid would you see then you, there is the possibility that events uh, line up and therefore you get kind of an intuitive idea of what are the edge patterns that cause the events so that's step number two uh, step number one sorry the first step you compute the the flow the optical flow which is basically shared uh, for all the events in this patch and it's uh, a direction in space time that you use to uh, to count or to project the events into a reference time and what it gives is kind of uh, just from the events then we get now a point set or a on the, on the 2D, a 2D point set on the image plane that represents the edge pattern that we want to track. The second step is the, once you have that, you do this for different uh, volumes of events. And uh, what you do is that um, you uh, propagate that uh, feature and use it to line up to register with the next point set. And that's what it's shown in this video that there is an initial shape and now the red point set which is the, the one at the current time is lining up with the, the previous one and this is done using an affine warping so in more details um, while there are some some um, soft associations, which is the probability that we are saying that an event it's originated by a 3d point or an edge j these are the called so called r i j that's the probabilities and these probabilities they are saying that the probability of this event is independent from the probability of the kth event the first step we said it's uh, coming up with um, with a feature to track and that's basically estimating the velocities of the optical flow such that the warp events uh, which are this x minus t i v the velocity and the other one x k minus t k v the events line up and get you get a kind of like a sharp pattern distinctive pattern and the second step of the algorithm is to if you have several of these try to uh, propagate them forward and uh, line them up as the events are coming yeah. And here the, the size of the circles, they are bigger than in these plots because basically what it's doing is kind of decimating the, the point sets. If there are many events, this is a point set with many, many points, many events. What you do is that you try to aggregate some of them uh, into what it would be like more important events than others. And that's kind of the, what the circle is representing. A bigger circle means that there were more warp events accumulated at this location than in others with smaller circles. Let's uh, take a look at uh, some experiment with the video. So this is uh, actually a fast motion. It all uh, plays in less than one second, but here it's a slow down to see the, the features on the background. We see in black and white the events, so the edge patterns, and then in the colors and the circle, we see the features being tracked and reinitialized every time that some of them are lost because they are moving out of the field of view. Yeah, so it was very, very fast, right? We can play it again if we want. Um, as you can see, these are just the raw events. There is no motion compensation in the display of the events because the, the edges, they have some, some thickness. And then these are the features. We use a different color for every feature so that we are uh, kind of distinguish them easily. Yeah. And these uh, features uh, similar to before that uh, there were some features detected on the frames that were used for visual odometry and we saw this toy model. Um, here, these features in this paper from CVPR 2017, they were used for visual inertial odometry. So what this algorithm is doing is taking two inputs. One of them are feature tracks from uh, from the algorithm. Kind of the tracks are shown here on the top right plot. And the other input are the 
IMU uh, data, so gyroscope and accelerometer measurements, so angular velocities and uh, accelerations. Uh, and then these are fed to uh, it's an extended Kalman filter, like an algorithm that fuses this information and produces an output, which is uh, the estimated um, pose of the camera. So in red is the ground truth, and in blue is the output of the algorithm that is compared to in green by another algorithm. At the beginning, they are more or less close to each other, but as errors accumulate and drift accumulates, uh, well, then they diverge. Nevertheless, it shows that uh, these features that were detected using the events, uh, they can be useful for um, higher applications such as visual odometry, visual inertial odometry in this case. Okay, so the next question is, uh, can we design maybe more accurate features? Um, well, 